capacitive. Okay. So first I will explain the organizing particular system for noise kind of invasion. It's very great pleasure to be here in the in Berlin, in fact. Uh, so I will speak on what we what are, we are developing in, in the quantic team. It is a uh, a group between, in fact, you have experimentalists at the Laboratoire de Physique de l'École Normale Supérieure, ENS Paris, and you have also theoreticians coming from INRIA and uh, Ecole des Mines. And we are inside a sort of, a, I will say, a superstructure, which is called Université PSN. Okay, so it's a, it's a French organization. Okay. Yes. So what is what is about the subject of this talk? Yes. Some slide of motivation. So the first uh, item is what is called a feedback loop. You have your system. Your system is a sort of block. Okay. You have inputs. Inputs is corresponding to information that are sent to the system. Either you have W, which is perturbation, something that you don't know. Or you have also some control input, U. And on your system, you have some information. Getting outside the box is Y. Okay, it's corresponding to sensor, to measurement. And you want to close the loop, typically a regulation problem is you want to search that the output measurements Y is close to some set point. Okay. Y, y C. You take the error, and you use typically what is called a controller, typically uh, people who know the proportional integral derivative controller, which is more PID control, which is more than 90% of what is used in industry or in application. And you close the loop such that, in fact, Y remains close to the set point YC, whatever the unknown perturbation are. Okay, you want to compensate something and to stabilize your system. Okay. And it is clear that, in fact, quantum evaporation is a feedback loop. The perturbation is corresponding to the noise, where you have some jump and so something. So W is the coupling to the environment, where you lose some information. Y corresponding to what is called in quantum evaporation to send home measurement to C, where you have an error, and you is correspond to what is called a sort of a correction pulse, okay, to correct each each physical qubit that you use to encode your logical qubits, okay. So and after you know what you see is at the at the starting point of this system, you have to look at some. Uh, in, in fact, fact uh, error rates. rates. And typically, in actual yeah. experiments, what, what you have is typically for one typical operation on a physical qubit, the error rate is less than 10 power minus 3, minus 4 in recent experiments. Okay. But it is not enough, of course, to do some useful computation. And the, the goal of this, of this, uh, of this lecture is to to see, see that, in fact, some control engineering techniques would be useful to increase, in fact, the fidelity of a physical qubit or a physical block that you use to encode information. Okay. So I will speak on this. Okay. So typical feedback, feedback issue is something, something which is adapted to, in fact, increase both precision and robustness. Okay. Something which is very classical things in, uh, in fact, in, uh, in uh, control engineering. So, when you look at quantum system, you have two kinds of feedback. Either you use a classical feedback loop, which means that your system is a quantum system. So you see that the, the perturbation corresponds to the coherence, okay? And here it is here, the perturbation decoherence here. You see that you have quantum measurement, but at the end you obtain some classical signal. And you have what is called typically drives, amplitude and phase, okay, of laser or microwave pulse.
okay. Microvehicles or something like this. And you see that in this case, the classical controller is some algorithm that, that take the pass record of a, in fact, of the measurement outcome, and it should be causal. And you, this compute, this gives you some U such that to achieve some goal. But you can also imagine, in fact, to have a controller, which is also a quantum system. Okay, so you have your system, you have your, co your controller is a quantum system, and typically it has also some decoherence. It has some, in fact, irreversible, uh, in fact, behavior. And by this, okay, you have a composite system, you are in the tensor product, and the idea of exploiting, in fact, some such kind of feedback, I will say, such kind of, I would say, coupling to the environment, which means that your system is coupled to the environment, so the environment, we'll say, is here through, in fact, your quantum controller, okay? And by designing correctly the quantum interaction, you may have something like conversion of gold, uh, gold state or gold manifold. And these ideas go back, in fact, to what is called optical pumping or alpha Kessler, okay? In, uh, in, the six, uh, in the 60s, I think it's around. Okay, so it's a basic idea, which is very efficient, uh, experimental. So here is the outline of my talk, okay, in this thing. I will speak on, so on the, on the photon box. It, it was conducted in the former of a team of Serge Laroche, now, which is now conducted by Michel Breu at uh, ENS and Collège de France. So I will describe what is for this very, in fact, the tutorial, in fact, system, where you see all, 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 all the typical uh, characteristic of what is a classical controller, what is a quantum controller. So for these things, so I will describe what is the dynamics. I need the dynamical model of this thing, and what, what is the structure of the stabilizing, in fact, a classical controller, and also you can also do some stabilization of Schrodinger cats in between the two mirrors with a, what is called a quantum controller. You will see what, what, what I mean by quantum controller. And then I will switch in the second part to, in fact, the continuous time system. Okay, where in this case, it is quite well adapted, in fact, to superconducting circuits because we measure typically some uh, current or voltage, which is a continuous yes. signal. Okay, we measure something continuous. So I will speak of what is the model. It is called the stochastic master equation. And I will explain what is, in this case, what is a quantum controller, which is dissipation engineering. Okay, and this thing. And the last part is something that we are, in fact, investigating in the group. Okay, it is about what is called related to bosonic code, where, in fact, you try to encode the quantum information inside, in fact, the Hilbert space of the harmonic oscillator, which is an infinite dimension. And here we will, uh, we will I will discuss two kinds of things, what is called cat qubits, and also something that we are looking now with Philippe Corbein on what is called the gene campaign for the testman in the or green state. 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 Okay. So, so, we are on the photon box. box. Okay. Where, where is it? Okay. 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 So it's not on my screen. Okay. It's not on my screen. It's not on my screen. It's not on my screen. So, so. So, no, it is full screen. So, what you see is the system of interest. It is typically some photon or trapped. In between the two, two mirrors. So, so here, here you have a harmonic oscillator. oscillator. And, and what, what you have, have so, so this is a completely feedback loop. loop. You, you said here for this box, box are atoms, we have atoms, which are seen as two level atoms. Okay. They start outside the box in ground state. So you have a Python box, more or less, which is deterministic. You have pre manipulation. Okay, by a current pulse, okay. Then you have interaction with the photon inside the box, okay. 
some entanglement, then you have cost manipulation. And here, at the end here, you have detector, okay, which gives you a order, up or down, up or down, or zero or one. So you have this click. And here, so here it is something which is purely classical. This is the click here. But right here, here you have a, a classical controller, digital one. And here what you decide is to decide what is the amplitude of a phase of a coherent pulse that you, in fact, inject to a photon, correspond, in fact, to a coherent displacement of a certain amplitude and phase. So typically, what the goal of this experiment that they have conducted uh, in, uh, in, I think it was the first experiment was conducted on this closed loop. It was in 2011, something like this. Okay. Up then, it was, in fact, to, what is the set point here? It is the number of photons inside the box. So typically it was three, four, five, so few photons. So what you have to, to see is that when typically the mirror absorb on one photon, they don't, they don't tell it to you. You have, you have to infer this from the statistics of the measurements of zero and one. Okay. And you infer this with a statistic for what is called a quantum filter, simple things. And then you compare it to the goal. So with a certain distance, which is called in control theory to a Lyapunov function or Martegal. And what you try it, in fact, in fact, is to set this Martegal to zero. And you know that when this Martegal is equal to zero, you are at free photon, just by adjusting you. Okay, so it is something which is, I would say, known in control engineering. So it is what is called the control of an hidden Markov chain. Okay, something like this. Okay. So, but what are the model of this kind of stuff? So the model are based on three rules. First, Schrodinger equation that everybody knows. Okay. I know from a wave function C or the density of character O. So this is coherent evolution. You have, in fact, measurement. So it is typically the Copenhagen interpretation. Okay. Where, in fact, the measurement outcome is, in fact, typically what is on what eigenspace of the measurement observable, of the observable, I project in fact, my system, okay, it is Y. So you see why the, measure, the information that you get when you measure, it is given by Y and you have this projection and the statistic are given by, in fact, the state just before the measurement. And you assume that the collapse in, in, is instantaneous in this thing. And the last point, okay, so I, I, I have no, so, and the last point, it is on this, uh, and this thing is something which is completely different as the first, the second one. It is something where, in fact, you never measure directly your system. You couple it to a matter and through the coupling to the matter, okay, you have some indirect information of what's inside the system. So you are in the tensor product. So rule one is something which is ordinary differential equation or partial differential equation, deterministic one. So it's something which is a little bit nothing new with respect, in fact, to classical system. Okay, but the two points here are completely different. You have a measurement back action. So you, when you want to stabilize your system, you have to be very clever of what kind of stuff you have to measure. Otherwise, you will destroy your goal. Okay, so you have to be, in this case, it was for the photon boss, it was quantum non-demolition measurements of photon. And the last point, this is something which is related to entanglement and so on, because you are on tensor product and not on Cartesian product, as it is the case for classical system. For classical system, the state is a Cartesian product of a subsystem. And for quantum system, it is a tensor product which changes completely the rules. Okay. So what is the basic measurement? So the basic things to get, in fact, the Markov process, you start from the big psi 
it is the big wave function, okay? When the atom gets outside the box M, it is separable state. You have a completely coherent evolution just before the detection. And just it is basic, in fact, uh, linear algebra. What you obtain, the state just before the detection, psi index R2, it is, in fact, a superposition, okay, on this, this thing. So you have two orthogonal, in fact, things. And because U is unitary, you have this, this thing, which is what we can see as a kind of partition of a unitary operator with respect to G, M, E, which are two linear operators. Okay, thank you. Here. And now you can design typically two kinds of interaction. Either you exchange, in fact, energy, okay? So either when, when you can, the, the atom enter in ground state and it gets outside in excited state. So you exchange energy. So you pose one photo inside the box or the reverse way. Or you can also exchange phase. Okay? Which is, in fact, it is in, either it is resonant interaction or dispersive interaction like this, where the classical notation of A is for annihilation operator and sigma plus, sigma minus, and sigma Z correspond to the classical, the usual Pauli operator. Okay. I will not detail this. And after that, what we have just to, so everything is on this slide, in fact, at that. So you have just before measurement, you have this, in fact, delocalization, I will say of a wave function between E and G. You measure, you have to choose one branch. Okay, when you measure Y, it is either G or E. And then you renormalize and you forget, in fact, the probe atoms. And what you obtain is this kind of stuff, okay, where, in fact, the new state is equal to something depending on the measurement outcome. Either you use G or E, okay, and you see that the probability, the sum of the probability is one, of course. Okay, this thing. And this is called the Markov process. And what is, on this thing, what is a quantum filter? A quantum filter on this is that you get, so what is the measurement outcome, either E or G, and you follow. It's nothing, nothing more. And if you want to do some Monte Carlo simulation, what is called quantum Monte Carlo simulation, what it is, it is just the fact that at each time step, you draw a number between zero and one according to a uniform law. If this number is less than this guy, you choose G. And if it is greater, you choose E. And you do like this, some Monte Carlo simulation. It is called quantum Monte Carlo simulation, but it is something which is very easy, okay? And the last point is that if you assume that your detector is broken, you know that an atom has passed uh, and you have to do something. In this case, you use some, in fact, Bayesian rule. And Bayesian rule gives you typically what is called a quantum channel or cross map. You have to update, in fact, through this map here, which is a linear map, Okay, your quantum state. Okay, it is the way that you can take into account the coherence. Okay, so everything is on this example, on this uh, uh, wonderful experiment. Everything is, in fact, contained in, in, in this. Uh, so it's, it is the, the starting point of every, every model of open quantum system here. You have everything here. Okay, so what is the stabilization of Fox state with a classical controller? Just here. What you have from a control engineering point of view, you have your input U, you have your in the hidden state rho, which is a probability law, in fact, and you have a measurement output Y. You have here typically the, the quantum uh, the update, and you see in the update what I put is, in fact, I put the coherent displacement after each measurement. Okay? And here you have a typically operator for q and measurement. I will not into, enter into the details. So you have to decide at each time frame what is UK. It is your control. Okay. And to do this, 
what you do in real time, what so in this case, it was it was a it was a, almost the first experiment where you have a time to do the computation, in fact, this experiment, because typically the, the sampling time is around 100 microseconds. And with a real-time computer, you can do some quite computation like this. So at each time step, you read what is your measurement, you update rho, then you compute u as a function of okay, which is a, it is a state feedback. Okay? And then you apply the microwave pulse and you and you continue like this. Okay? It is nothing more. So it is what is called in quantum engineering an observer controller. In fact, uh, structure. So you have a real time state estimation, okay, of your quantum state by this update. Okay. You know the past measurement, you know the past control. So you can update, of course, the quantum state like this just by using, in fact, the Markov uh, rules. And then at each time state, you have to, in fact, to, uh, to compute what is rho. And in this case, what you use is what you use some, something which is preserved in open loop when you do screen the measurement. It is any function like this. It is the trace of any function of a number of photons times rho is a martingale, which is in average, it is constant. So you have to design G of n, something positive, and it is only zero when n is equal to three. And you want to stabilize this to zero. When you stabilize this to zero, you are on the goals, on, on the, on the, on the set point. Okay. And here you have some, on this slide, you have some, in fact, the data. It's it corresponding to the experiment. So what you see here, it is rho. So what we start with a coherent state of three photons, a coherent state of three photons in the photon, in the Fock basis. It is something which is not diagonal, of course. You have some coherence here. Okay? The goal is three photons. This is something like this. Here you see the measurement. So you see that the, the system is not perfect. Okay? Sometimes you have two atoms. Sometimes you have no atoms. Sometimes you have the detection tells you nothing. It is detection efficiency. So you have to take all these things into account, but it is just use base law. Okay? To take this, to include this in your Markov model. Okay? This is the Lyapunov function. And this is the coherent pulse. So we use just a phase, zero on pi, and the amplitude is, uh, is, uh, is given by the, this bar here. Okay? And here, typically, is the average number of photons. In green, it is three. In blue, it is greater than three. And in red, it is less than three. So what you see here during this the process, you see that you reach almost three photons, but you are not sure that you are three photons because of all this, in fact, uh, detection efficiency, detection error rate, and so on. And you have also a delay, feedback delay. And you see here, typically, the cavity destroyed one photon. So you go to two photons typically, and you have to recover by a current pulse, something like this. And as far as I know, this experiment is the first experiment of a true quantum state feedback. Because in fact, when you see the, uh, here, the quantum state, you see, when you want to recover, so your, your controller, your actuator is not well adapted because you want to remain on the diagonal, okay? Because it is QND. QND measurement, in fact, tells you rho and put rho on the diagonal. It kills all the coherence between the photon number. But on, on the diagonal, you still have the photon decay. So you have to compensate this. The controller is just to compensate the photon decay. But when you inject coherent pulse, like here, typically, you have to go, you cannot remain on the diagonal. You have to, to go off diagonal, which means that here, you cannot represent the statistic of a system by, in fact, classical probability law. The rho at different times do not commute in general. Okay. And as far as I know, it's the first true quantum state feedback that has been uh, realized experimentally. Okay.
And what about, so we have an idea, it's, the, the, the experiment has never been done, but after that, we have an idea, in fact, to, to stabilize Schrodinger cat. But in this case, it is like this. It is much, much simpler. So you start with photon, with, uh, with probe atoms. So each atom will be a kind of controller with a reset, okay? And you just tailor in a clever way the interaction between the atoms and the photon. And the way to tailor is, is this thing. When the atoms enter into to the box, you are dispersing, but redshift. In the middle of the interaction, you have a small phase where you are resonant. And just after interaction, before leaving the box, you are still dispersive, but blue shift. All with all this trick, what you can assume, it is something like this. So the, 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 here is the, the James Cumming, so omega Q, and you can do this just by using some stark effect with an electrical field between the two mirrors. Okay, just you, you can, you, you, you can in fact use some stark effect on the level of the two level uh, of a Hilbert atom. Okay. And at the end, you never measure the atom. So what you have, you have a Kauss map. But since with this Taylor interaction, you have very specific measurement operator, NG and ME, in fact. And what you have, it was, it was in the, in the thesis of, uh, of Zaki. You have this mathematical result. I will not enter into the details. You have a cross map with parameter and you want to prove that you converge, okay, to something. So here, you know, I, I, I am, I am a French guy. So I know I like to do some theorem. So it is something like this. So what, what is important is that you, you compute to unique steady state. Okay. And this steady state for well chosen para experimental parameter, it is close to, in fact, to a Schrodinger cat. It is not exactly a Schrodinger cat. It is not exactly a pure state, but it's close to that. Okay, and here you have the theorem, it is something like, it was in, in the thesis of Zaki. Okay. So you see, in this case, the, the stabilization is just, in fact, in tailoring in a much more difficult, in fact, uh, elaborate way, the interaction between your system, okay? And the controller. The controller is the atoms. And the fact that you change the atoms from time to time, it's something that you relax. It's your environment, but forget it's in this condition. Okay? So you see, in this case, from an engineering point of view, if you can tailor this in a clever way, okay, an adapted way, with respect to your goal, it is much more simple because you do, you have no need, in fact, to measure and to use this feedback loop. So let's switch. So what time is it? Okay. okay. So here I have summarized more or less what you get when you use Schrodinger dynamics for coherent evolution. So collapse of a wave packet, tensor product and entanglement, and classical probability law to take into account all the errors. Okay. When you use this, the model that you obtain in discrete time, it is something like this. So you start with a cross map when you know nothing. It is something like this. You have to take into account detection error, efficiency, and so on. You have what is called a left stochastic matrix. So it is a matrix, okay, where the sum of each column is one. And each entry of a matrix, okay, is between zero and one. And you use this, I will say, partial cross map. So you, you, you set, okay. You use this thing, which gives you a partial cross map. You normalize, in fact, by the trace, and this gives you the structure of a Markov chain. Every model of open quantum system in discrete time has this structure. 
okay? And you see that your Krauss map here, your quantum channel, you decompose it as a sum of a small quantum channel depending on the measurement outcome, the true one, okay? And then you, you get this. It is something which is directly. So if you want to, to have this in a much more mathematical way, you can look at the book of Davis and so on. But it is uh, with uh, sister algebra and so on. It is something much more complicated. But in discrete time, it is like this. No, nothing more. For a stochastic, for a, a continuous time system, so now what you have, you have a stochastic differential equation. So it looks something as ugly as this one. Okay. So here you have a d rho. D rho of t is by definition rho of t plus dt minus rho of t. It is exactly this, d rho of t. So here you have something which is proportional to dt corresponding to the Lindblad equation. And here you see you have what is called the measurement back action because the noise that you inject in the equation, state equation, is exactly the noise that you inject in the output map, which is completely different. What is known in the stochastic uh, classical system, where in fact the noise are in general completely correlated. Typically for Kalman filtering, okay, all these things, you assume you have, you have noise in the state equation, you have noise in the output map, which are nothing to do. Here, the fact that you have measurement back action is that the noise is the same. It is not so obvious to see that this guy, when data is small, is exactly this thing. So, and you want to, if you want to simulate typically this thing, just if you have, in fact, you, you need, in fact, a simulation scheme that is a cross map. And it is exactly this here. So you can formulate stochastic master equation in continuous time. Here I use some linear process, but you can also use some Poisson process if you have jump. You have exactly this formula where, in fact, you have a partial cross map on the numerator and you normalize by the trace. And here you have something a little bit different because the normalization here is just a prefactor in front of Gaussian law because you are, you, are, you are in continuous time. So the normalization here, okay, is just, in fact, the prefactor of some Gaussian law. And with this rule, you preserve the fact that the probability is always a linear function of all, which comes from typically the basic collapse. Okay? So, quantum dissipation engineering. So, it goes back, in fact, if you look in classical system to what is called the what cover now, where you have your steam machine, and you control your mechanical system by another mechanical system, which are coupled in a mechanical way. And if you look at, uh, it is a good exercise, if you look at the basic engineering model of this guy, so the dynamics of your system is here, the variation of the velocity depends, in fact, uh, is attached to the variation of the, in fact, angle that you put in the input stream, steam, okay? And here you have the back action because since you have this mechanical coupling, you have the back action is, is here. In the zero of the work regulator, it is here in this space. So, and if you want to look at the stability of this third order system, you have this, in fact, third order, in fact, equation. You have this characteristic polynomial, and you see that lambda, the dissipation that you have to put, the friction that you have to put in the regulator should be large enough. Otherwise, it is unstable. It's quite amazing, this. You need some dissipation in the regulator to preserve the stability of your system. Okay. But what are the key issues here? It is asymptotic stability, okay? and also convergence rate from the experiment. And here, convergence rate, you can have this by using at the root of this, uh, of this uh, third order polynomial. So you can imagine something which is similar 
to for uh, quantum system, you are your system. You engineer engineer the interaction with your controller. Controller is yes, I mean, your controller in fact is a uh, is a quantum uh, quantum controller. And then what you have is if you engineer something like this, if you converge to this exponentially with a certain rate, so then when you put some small decoherence on your system, you can imagine that you will converge to something which is a little bit shifted, okay? If in fact the rate of conversion to, uh, the time scale of conversion to times the rate of the coherence of your system is much smaller than one, of course. You, you need some, so, so some typical scaling. Okay. And the convergence analysis in this case is based just in this case to a linear differential equation or partial differential equation for rho, where you have a lot of pro property. And in particular, there is something which is very interesting is that if you take an observable, A, which is positive, okay? And if you assume that its Heisenberg evolution is negative, then you know that the trace of A rho is a Lyapunov function, tend to decrease. So it gives you so what is called, in fact, in a, for partial differential equation, a priori estimate, okay? It's a generalization of something. If A is constant, it is an invariant. If A dot is negative, it is something that decreases. So it gives you some information without knowing exactly the solution of the system. It's something which is very important. So, and you can use all these things, okay, to prove convergence of your system. So let's finish by, by some things on quantum error correction. So you know that for quantum error correction, you have to convert to, uh, to compensate for bit flip and phase flip, which gives you typically 2D, in fact redundancy to compensate both error. So typically what you have is I make some picture from my former student, Lev Arcadi. So you have quantum error correction in discrete time. And here it is what is called grid state. It is quantum error correction on, in fact, a quantum oscillator. And here you have typically the, the Wigner function of a grid state, okay? Well, you have a positive spot plus is uh, red and negative spot uh, blue and in between it is zero. You see, you have a sort of rough analogy between the two. Okay? Okay. And here it is the definition, what is the Wigner function of a, of a, of a, of a density operator. Okay. And what you have at this hand to, to finish the, the parallel so in quantum error correction, you assume always that you have an error model. And the error model is local, which means that here you encode in this grid just one logical qubit, and you assume that the error is only that each qubit can flip, or phase flip or bit flip, independently of it of the other. So the error model here is local. And what will be the locality in the bosonic case? It will be on the wave function, on the Wigner function, some dissipation. You put some diffusion, okay? It is typically diffusion on the, on the, on the wave, on the Wigner function, which are local. And with this thing, you can compensate. Now I will continue rapidly. So for a coherent state, you can put diffusion, no problem. You preserve more or less the set of coherent state for the other one, okay, you preserve, you preserve things. But for the superposition of plus and minus state, you see here, you are not robust to what? Not to horizontal diffusion. To horizontal diffusion, you are quite robust because in fact, the, the, you, you, you do not destroy the fringe. But to vertical diffusion, you are not robust. Okay, so with this kind of state, you can have something where, in fact, the phase flip and the bit flip are very different rates. And here, with this kind of engineering, typically cat state, you can, in fact, almost kill bit flip. When you encode zero is in the coherent state plus alpha, 
and minus and one is correspond current state minus alpha. Okay. But when you take the super current superposition, you you have phase flip. Okay. And if you look at now typically uh, grid state, so this is the wave function of grid state, which is zero. So it is robust to small diffusion because the positive blobs do not mix with negative blobs because they are separated by zero. Okay. Here you have exactly for one, just a shift. And if you use, in fact, the superposition of zero and one, okay, what you obtain is just a rotation of pi over two because it is, it's go back, this thing go back to what is called the Poisson formula. The Fourier transform of a comps, Dirac comps, is, a, is another Dirac comps. It's go back to what is called the Poisson formula, formula which is well known in, in fact in, a, in the Shannon, in fact, uh, sampling theorem. Let's okay. leave some time for questions, Pierre. Please. Yes. And I finish by this, of course. I am not alone here, and here it is. It was the group one year ago, and I am here. I just to save it. I am here, and the same week we are ANSI for our annual meeting. So, so I, since you asked to me to come here before, they decide the schedule of this meeting. I do not change, but I should have been in ANSI this week. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre. Talk is open for questions. Concerning your last uh, mentioning of the Wigner function and the plots. Yeah. So the canonical variable Q was real. So it is about one uh, qubit. Is the, the Wigner function that you're showing? What do you say? Which, which slide? This one, this is uh, in a one a one dimensional density function. Uh, big. Yes, this is this is this. Uh, so you take this wave function, okay? Yes. Which is in fact a smooth, in fact, in fact. So now, since you were referring to many qubits, right? Or uh, maybe I understood not no, only about one. Only one. So yeah. you you will store in this state which is a, a sum of exotic state of a harmonic oscillator. You agree with me? It's not standard. With this kind of state, you encode in zero and one, okay, with this grid state, you, you encode logical information. So can you tell me what, how you interpret the momentum in this case and uh, if this density function is always positive? So if you, if you want to have typically, the, if you measure, okay, on the, way, on the Wigner function, if you want to measure typically, you will see Q. You have a certain probability distribution on Q. Just take, in fact, the integral over the vertical line. So what you will see here, you will have zero and the matching. And if you do exactly the same thing on P, okay, you will take, take also the integral with respect to horizontal line. Okay, it is just this. It is basic property of a Wigner function. But this state is a pure state in this case. It, it is a pure state. Yeah, yeah, it's positive function. So, and you see that it is a quantum state because you have negative part in the Wigner function. It is a quasi probability state. So, it is something which is typically quantum in this case. It is not the relation between classical and quantum system as people use for Wigner function. It is something quite different in this case. Are there further questions? Um, hi. Uh, could you please elaborate on why the uh, back action with the shared noises is uh, different from the classical Kalman filtering? I didn't quite get that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 
here. Yeah. So it is about this slide. Yes. So if you take typically, so maybe I can use this. Typically, if you take typically uh, a classical stochastic model, so state x, which is a vector of Rn, okay, it is something like this. You have dx is equal to what is called the drift, okay, plus. And here you have f1 of x, dw of t, okay? And you have dy is equal to h of x, dt, plus dx of t, okay? It's a typical model that people use to take into account they, they have some uncertainty, okay, in the equation. Typically what you have is you want, uh, uh, a, a system X is equal to Q and P. So you take DQ is equal to PDT. No noise here because it is just cinematic. And then you take DP. It is minus Q DT oscillator plus DW of T. Okay. And with this kind of stuff, you obtain some more or less the Langevin equation and something like this. And you, you say, well, what I measure is this dy. It is dq, I measure things, plus some noise, which is independent of the noise that you have here. It is dx of t, okay? It is something like this, because it is the noise that you have in your measurement apparatus, which has nothing to do to the noise corresponding to the Brunner motion. It is typically something classical. Here, in this case, it is completely different. 